Some people like to go to the movies. Some people like to go to dinner. Some people like to have a life. I like to play with old makeup that might be expired and might wreck my face. Don't care, can't help it. It's just who I am. It's my journey. It is who I am. Ooh. Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. So for today's video, I'm super excited because obviously, as you saw in the title, we're doing a shop my stash and I went deep for this video. Like there are some things that I pulled out of the archives that I haven't seen in so long, like probably 2017, 2018, like it's been a hot minute and I'm so excited to play around with them, see what I think, laugh at my old taste and just, I don't know, like relax and have a good time. I'm just feeling very like lighthearted, but also very relaxed. And I think for the first time in recorded history as I'm like going back through my brain I don't have any other like updates or disclaimers or things I need to mention so I'm thinking we just go ahead zoom the camera in we get started and we start putting these old ass goodies on our face and hope that they're not too expired like are arguably they're probably all expired but does your girl care absolutely not because I'm so excited there are so many things in here <gasps> I can't wait for you guys to see so let me go ahead and zoom it in let's get going here we are good and zoomed in hello We're going to start with the primer and I have this one from touch in soul this is the no pore bloom primer this is specked out on the bottle as being a pore correcting or pore smoothing type primer and y'all probably remember a couple years ago especially if you were in the makeup scene this was such a huge huge primer. I believe it was, I want to say Jeffree Star who made this one like super hyper popular. And for me, it wasn't so much that I didn't like this primer. It was just that like my pores, if I'm being honest, they're just so large and so aggressive that I felt like it didn't do much for me. And don't get me wrong, maybe times have changed and you know, maybe my face will really love it this go around. Uh, Cause it does have like a really soft feel on the skin. But I just remember when I tried this so long ago, and again, this is probably a year and a half, two years old at least. Um, I remember when I tried it being like, oh, it's gonna smooth me out. Like, I'm gonna feel so good. And then I got all my makeup on and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> like, it didn't do anything. And it's just, again, I think it's just because my, my pores and my texture are so intense. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and set that down with another product that I love. And this is something I did talk about when I did, I think it was maybe my 2017 favorites video, which I can link up here. And that is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Riser. I have a little bit left in here, so I thought I'd use that. Now I did go ahead and give that just a couple of seconds to like dry down on the skin and really absorb and it's time for foundation and this is something I pulled out of my drawer and I haven't seen this in so long. It was one of my all-time favorite foundations a couple of years ago and that would be the original Dior Forever. This is after they put it in the new bottle and oh my god you guys between this one and the Dior Forever Glow version I was absolutely obsessed with this foundation. Like I wore it every single day and I actually repurchased. This was my second bottle back in like 2018, I wanna say. And it's just, oh, it was such a good foundation. So I know it's probably expired, like the, the odds are. Yeah, it had a 12 month life. So it's probably expired by like six months or so, maybe a year, who knows. But I took it out of the drawer and I gave it like a good old, like a little snuff test and it, it did okay, a snuff test. I think I meant to say sniff test, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, but I gave it a good old huff and I think, I I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna be using this in the shade 0N and just applying it with my Dose of Colors sponge here. Let's go ahead and squirt some out. Yeah, it still smells, actually, wow. That smell brings back memories, oh my god. That smells identical to what I remember. Holy cow. There was, a, like, when I tell you I was in love with this, this was my go-to every single day foundation. Now, for concealer, I'm grabbing my Too Faced Born This Way. This is in the shade Swan, and I'm grabbing this mainly because I remember liking the smoothing aspect of it. Ooh, is that a little bit too dark for today? I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. What I remember more than anything with this concealer was loving the way that it, like, smoothed out over my skin, and I thought it it would be a nice pairing with the um, with the foundation because I also used to love the way that that one smoothed over my skin. It's a little bit too dark for me for this foundation. I like to have a little bit of a brighter under eye, so I might mix in a little something else. I remember when I first tried this concealer and I wouldn't use anything else. Like I went through probably three bottles of this concealer in this exact shade before I would even consider touching like anything else, even my uh, my Tarte Shape Tape. But I am gonna go in and just brighten up like my inner eye and a little bit through the T-zone, just a tiny, tiny bit. And for that, I'm gonna pull this guy out of the vault. This is the Jeffree Star Concealer in the shade C2. And it's a very light toned concealer. I'm not gonna use a lot of it just because this concealer isn't really my favorite, 
but I do love it for brightening, so I've always saved it and just kind of mixed it in a little bit here and there. But from here, I wanna go ahead, obviously, and start setting the face, and that's gonna be the under eyes and the T-zone first. And I pulled a different setting powder. Obviously, this is one I haven't used in a while, and that is the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder. Oh, I don't remember having any, like, adverse issues with this. The powder itself has a really nice mill to it. I'm gonna go ahead and take this powder, and I'm just applying it with my sponge, making sure before I press that in to work out the, the creases that are from the concealer and then go in and really set them down with the powder. Just make sure that everything sets in as smoothly as possible. And I'm also just gonna follow through around and do the same thing around the mouth and make sure that I really set the T-zone. For the perimeters of my face, I'm gonna grab my Scott Barnes 67 here and just a little bit of that powder in this cap. And I'm more so going to lightly buff this into the cheeks and over the planes of my face just to make sure that I don't over apply it. So with everything good and set down, I actually really like the way the skin is looking. I'm not having any issues with products. Everything seems to be like matching together very well as far as the mesh goes. So I'm happy so far. And this is where that might change because I, for bronzer, did go ahead and get a little bit funky with my choices. I picked out two different ones. One is more matte, one is more luminous. And I just thought this would be kind of like a good mixture to go with. So for the matte bronzer, I went with an oldie, but a very good goodie, and that is the Wet n' Wild Color Icon Bronzer. This was such a favorite of mine back in the day, and I have it in the shade, what is this, Ticket to Brazil 739, and it was just such a nice matte toned bronzer, very, um, very light on the skin, like you can see, it, it barely shows up, but it really was a good buildable base that you could kind of layer with other stuff, or if you were going for a more natural bronze, it was always good for that as well. And then to pair with that, I grabbed a bronzer that I haven't touched in so long. It used to be such a favorite, and so, like some of you are gonna look at this and be like, oh my god, Paige, you need to get rid of that right now, and it would be none other than the Urban Decay Naked Illuminated Bronzer. First of all, I really just wanna draw attention to that giant dent that's missing. Do you know how long it takes to make a dent like that? A very long time, and believe me when I tell you, I use this bronzer like every single day, and I don't I didn't apply it right. I would be like, blah, 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 blah. I would just throw it all over my face. Had no idea what I was doing, but I was so in love with this. It's like a straight up, like shimmery, metallic-y type bronzer. And I would just throw it everywhere, honey. It was like my go-to, my jam. I didn't care if I was twinkling more than Edward Cullen, honey. I was all about this bronzer. And I have this in the shade Lit, number one. At number two, I just read the back and it's not even specked out as a bronzer. Big surprise. Uh, this is called a Naked Illuminated Shimmering Powder for Face and Body. <laughs> and I used it as a bronzer. Oh, wow. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna mix the two together and, and kind of hopefully come up with something. So I'm gonna take my dual fiber brush here, the same one I always used, and uh, we're gonna start off with the Wet n' Wild bronzer. I'm just gonna dig in. Oh, wow. I forgot how powdery that is. Holy cow. Uh, but we're gonna start by going in with this one and just kind of setting down a little bit of a base, which <laughs> you do have to build because she's very sheer. I think after like, what, three passes, we finally got some color on this cheek. What's going on here? So now that we've went ahead and we've built up some of that bronzer, which I actually think looks really nice, uh, we're gonna go ahead and top it off with a little bit of this baked illuminator situation. I'm so nervous. But you know what, Page of Current just doesn't really, doesn't really care much because, it's just who we are. So let's go ahead and lightly kind of dust that over our bronzer. Oh boy. Oh boy, not too much, Paige, not too much. Let's not get crazy, okay? Now for blush, I picked out two different options. They're both from MAC, and they are both options that I loved back when they came out. And the first one that I'm gonna show you is the Take Me Home Blush Duo. This is when Patrick Star and MAC did their collabs. Look at that color. <gasps> if that doesn't just like fill your heart with some kind of feeling, I'm gonna mix them together. Oh my God, this color. I did layer this up twice so you could actually see it on camera, but it has the most beautiful undertone to it when you you mix them together but if you want you know just one or the other you can obviously do that too and it gives you a little bit more versatility in the color and then the other one for mac that i chose is their mother o pearl and i was obsessed with this blush it has all those different tones in it that you can see obviously right there it's a very similar tone when you're swiping it around here it is over here compared to the other one the only difference with the mother o pearl is that it has a little bit less pigmentation let's go ahead and start applying the blush and for that i'm going to use this um Beautylish, this is one of their 420 brushes, and I've just loved this for blush. It's a really good brush. And I am going to take the duo first, and I think I'm gonna mix, well, 
yeah I'm gonna start and just kind of tap in between both shades and I'm gonna knock off a lot of the powder so I'm left with just like a nice little veiling because as you just saw in swatch this does have a little bit more power behind it so I want to be a little bit more you know just conscious a little bit more light-handed girl Look at how quickly that stacks up. And over top of that, I'm going to grab just a little bit of the Mother O' Pearl just to give it that nice light glow. Just a little bit. Again, with blush, it's kind of one of those things that I tend to be heavy-handed with. Y'all know you've seen it a thousand times with me. And I'm trying to just be a little bit, a little bit lighter, a little bit more conscious with my blush choices. All right, so two things. Number one, can you just tell me why I'm not doing my blush with these every day? Because I love these colors. Like, this used to be just a ride or die. It never left my side. So good. And he actually came out with, I think, one more blush duo in this same collection that I was obsessed with. It was so, so good. And I pulled this one just because it matched with this a little bit better, but I loved both of these duos. And fun fact number two, this one right here, the Mother O Pearl, it's actually not specked out as a blush. It's their Pearl Matte Face Powder. And after I read that, I was just kind of sitting here thinking, and I remember way back when I realized like, oh, this isn't actually a blush because it does have that more pearlescent quality to it. And even back when I used to use it, I would wear it over top of a blush. So I think it's kind of ironic that I grabbed these together because I didn't remember that until just now. So memories are just flooding all over the plays with me right now. I'm just like, I'm just loving this so much. It's so fun. Some people like to go to the movies. Some people like to go to dinner. Some people like to have a life. I like to play with old makeup that might be expired and might wreck my face. Don't care. Can't help it. It's just who I am. It's my journey. It is who I am. Ooh, I wish I could control this, but I just can't. I just can't. Not my mouth, not my hands. It's just, no, 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 mm, 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 mm. It's just who we are. Ooh, next up, we're gonna work on eyes. And I have this Urban Decay Double Down Brow, which I haven't used in so long. It's a brow powder, like, hybrid type feel. And I just pinched my little finger in this back right here. And I'd like to say it's the first time, but it's not. I've done it a thousand times and I did it again. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and talk, shall we? This is what I'm going to be using. I'm trying to like put a smile on my face and act like I didn't just maim myself. But, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm also a little dramatic, so I'm trying to keep it in check. But this is the Urban Decay Double Down Brow Putty. So as I mentioned, it's not a powder. It has more of like almost a gel type consistency, but it is so, so amazing. It lasts really well. And I don't think you can see it on camera. I'm going to try to like get it in the light. There you go. Can you see how big the dip is in this? Like I've almost hit pan on both of these sides because I bought this when they first released it and I literally used nothing else for months because this is just, it's such a fantastic, fantastic product. And I am using this in the shade Neutral Nana. So I'm gonna go ahead and start applying. This is the Morphe and Jeffree Star JS7. It's just an eyebrow brush. I haven't done brow powder in so long, but I remember it being so easy and so straightforward to do. All right, so I went ahead and I finished up the brows. I just added a little bit of my Benefit Gimme Brow. This is in shade five, and I had to add that because I don't have any other tinted brow gels that are old because I tried to go through and use them all up. So I use this. But let's go ahead and talk about eyeshadow because for my eyeshadow choice today, I grabbed a palette that is so old, and when this came out, I was so obsessed, and that is none other than the wild one from Marc Jacobs. This is one of their iconic palettes. And oh my gosh, like look at it's a huge, it has a big old mirror here. And I remember when this palette launched, I wanna say 2017, 2018. Again, very old as far as my reviews and like going that far back. But this palette was such a good palette for back then. Like the color story, the options, the shimmers, like everything was just like, ha. Huh. I, I mean, I couldn't have asked for anything more. Even look at this packaging. Like this right here alone, like it sold me just because it was so like fun and different and zebras and ooh, like it just had so many things going on that were so me. I'm really feeling like this, there's a shade, oh my God, like isn't that so beautiful? So satisfying. Let's go ahead and start swatching. It's like more of a duochrome type color. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Another one in here, there's like this beautiful lilac purple type color that matches it really well give you a little swatch. Both of those are absolutely stunning. You know what? I'm not going to use this to set my eyelids. Normally I would, but I, I want to be fair to the palette and like really play around with it. So I'm going to take some of my Hourglass um, concealer. This is in the shade Birch. And with that set down, I think the first thing I'm going to do is just set through the crease right here with this bone colored shade. And I'm going to take this on a Morphe R34. And I'm just going to dust that through the crease. Again, this is just to set everything down make sure it all blends nice and smooth. And then I think I'm gonna dive with that same brush into this lighter toned, it's almost like a cool toned purple. And I'm gonna start using that to build the crease. 
I'm gonna start taking it, I think, just right in the center of the eye there, blending it towards the inner eye, but I'm not gonna take any direct color and really pull it through, just what's left over. And then also pull that out towards the outer V right there. This is gonna be just a beginning kind of transition shade. That's a really beautiful color. Also, for anybody uh, wanting an update on this foundation, now that I'm looking at it nice and close, um, it's very dry. <laughs> like right through here, I'm completely cracked on both of my smile lines. So that's a situation. Probably could have used a setting spray about 15, 20 minutes ago, but you know what? It'll be fine. Are you gonna snack? Mm, thank you, mom. You're welcome. You're a good mom, I like you. Geez, thanks. I'll keep it over good. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Yeah. Thank you. Those are good. Say hello to the bean dip. Hi, wiener beans. Hi, little baby. Yeah, sissy misses you too. So for anybody wondering what that little special delivery was that scared the bejesus out of me, it would be roasted cauliflower, and it is delicious. My mom can roast a cauliflower like ain't nobody's job, and normally I'm like the first person to be like, vegetables, get the hell out of here with that, and hers are just really good. Like these, I have eaten them several times now, and they are just delicious, and I don't, she said it's just like salt, pepper, and like a teeny tiny little bit of like the spray over top of them, and she just roasts them in the oven, and they're so so unbelievably good and I've never liked them before so maybe it's a hormonal craving maybe not but they are delicious Let's go ahead and uh, keep moving on with the eye look I'm gonna grab this darker teal shade right here again same brush oh man that has so much color to it oh my good lord okay we're gonna be very careful with this and we're just gonna set that down oh my word Whew, oh, honey, y'all better be careful and blend your life away because that is just so much pigment, so much color. But I do love the way that that and that cool tone purple look together. They look really pretty. And then I'm just grabbing this clean brush. It's just a BH something, but it's just clean and fluffy. And I'm gonna work that around that teal just to help diffuse the color a little bit more here. I want to add just a little bit more depth. So I'm gonna grab this chocolatey brown shade right here. And I'm just going to apply that and use it more so as like a deepener for that teal because they share some of that same undertone. Taking just a little bit of that brown as well onto the lower lash line and then blend that out on the lower lash line with a little bit of that cool tone purple. All right, so that looks really pretty. I know it's kind of like, it's a vision. It's definitely a work in progress, but for where I'm going with it, like I think that looks really good. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab some of my NYX glitter glue, you know, the thing I use every day, and I'm gonna pop that on my inner lid right here. And then I'm gonna take on my finger some of this really beautiful deep duochrome and pop that on the lid. Oh my God, that color. Oh, this is such a good decision. Okay, Paige, you are winning in the decision department. You might've made mistakes in your life and you might've worn wind pants all through seventh grade and went ch -ch 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 down the hallway every single day. But you know what? That's okay, who cares? This is making up for it because oh my God, this color is beautiful. We could take this lilac color and put that on the inner corner, couldn't we? I mean, I don't know how like bright it is, but that's a really pretty shade, especially if I pop like a highlight over top of it. That could totally work. I'm so inspired by myself. I love this. Oh, that's so pretty. All right, so here's what you guys need to know about Paige. I'm that person that if I don't stop, I'm never going to stop and I will ruin an eye look completely in a matter of 12 seconds. I'm gonna run off of camera really quickly and do this eye. I'm gonna eat some of my roasted cauliflower and I will be back on here in a few just to finish up the face. So hang tight and I'll be back. All right, so I am back. I went ahead and got both of the eyes finished and now we're gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of the face. And for that, I actually found a powder. You you guys know that I love to brighten up my under eye and brighten up my face and this is a powder that I have had for quite some time and if I recall correctly I actually really enjoyed this power this is the Anna Sue and I'm probably butchering that I got it off of Beautylish and this is their brightening face powder and when I bought it I accidentally bought the refill versus the pan so I have to keep it in the box and then in here but this is basically just a face brightening powder that you can use under your eyes all over your face so on and so forth and I grabbed it for today's video because as you guys know I'm always reaching for a brightening powder and I thought this would be a good choice for today so let me go ahead here this is my Scott Barnes 64 and I am going to just throw that under the eyes look at how brightening that is like it's crazy how well this powder works can't believe I have left this sitting in my drawer for so long I'm so gonna pull this out 
and use it all the time because it's such a good brightening powder. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set my face and I did pull three different setting sprays for today, but the one I'm gonna use before I go in with highlight is the Florence by Mills Zero Chill Setting Spray. As you can see, I've used a fair amount of this. I really like the mist on this. It's very in between. It's not super fine mist, but it's also not like an aggressive, you know, too heavy of a, of a flow type mist. It's nice and in between. So I still feel like it gets my face nice and set down. So as we've seen in the other areas, whether it's setting spray, bronzer, blush, what have you, I'm a little bit extra in my choices for this video. And it definitely didn't stop here because I grabbed three different containers for highlight. They are all from Becca and it's just because I saw them all and I was like, Hoo -hoo, I need to play with them all, obviously. This one that I have is Perla, which this one I have actually hand pressed back in here because I bought two of these and they both shattered. You can see it actually still has a huge crack through it. But both of the Becca highlights that I purchased, this is you know, again, back in 2017, 2018, they both completely shattered on me within I'm mean, not even a week or two weeks of owning them. It was just horrible, horrible luck. So this is the shade Perla right here, which I figured I would mix with one of these other shades. One is their Endless Bronze and Glow, which as a concept, I think is really awful because obviously you're not gonna bronze blush and highlight in here because that bronzer is this big. But I really liked the shade over here. This highlight shade I thought was really pretty and I also really liked this blush shade because it's more of like a shimmery type blush. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch those so you can kind of see them right there and right there. It just, I don't know, I feel like it, this this pink one has almost like a tangerine undertone that I really liked, so I grabbed that. And then the last one that I grabbed is also a gradient type option right here. This is their Gradient Glow. Look at me, I'm, I'm on top of my game. Their Shimmering Skin Perfector, and this is the Gradient Glow version. And this is such a beautiful highlight. I've actually used this a ton. I don't know if you can see it in there, but there's like a noticeable dip in this region because this highlight was such a favorite but it's definitely too dark for my skin tone. Here is a swatch right here. And I just kind of thought, you know, I could maybe mix all of these together and come up with a highlight. So let's go ahead and start off, I think, with a base of this one. And I'm gonna go in right here. This is just the Jelly Pop Stipple Brush from e.l.f. I'm gonna start right in this little middle region here. And I'm going to just pop this over here. It doesn't have to be too... Um, aggressive because I'm gonna go over it again with another color as well with the perla shade just to really pop. So I'm more so looking for just that nice little glazed cheek, which is super pretty. I grab a little bit of this middle pink shade right here, mix that in just a little bit because again, apparently today is just like the day of extra and I just really want everything on my cheek. I just, I'm really craving all the glow, all the highlight. And then with both of those on, we're going to lightly tap into Perla. Now this shade is no joke. You have to be like extra careful with it because in a matter of like one swipe, you will be literally a light bulb. Lightly take it, hit the chalupa chin. Y'all know I love that greasy ass chin moment. All right, so let's go ahead now and finish up with some setting sprays. I'm gonna grab the Smashbox Photo Finish setting spray. This one I tested out maybe a year or so ago. Ooh, oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> I almost blasted myself in the face. And then on top of that, we're gonna add just a little bit of the e.l.f. Glow Dewy Mist. This is just a little bit of a nicer hydrating option that'll hopefully give my skin back a little moisture. Okay, so I'm just being honest here. The mist on that last e.l.f. one is very like, <laughs> like old man spitterific type situation. Cool, okay. And then for mascara, I grabbed two different options. I have the Double Decker Lashes by Butter London, and then I also have the Monsoor Big by Lancome. And I grabbed both just because I wasn't sure. And when it comes to different mascara options, I don't have a ton because, again, I, I try to like use them up more so than let them go bad if I can help it. So I'm gonna go in with the Lancome first, and then I thought if it needed a little help, I could zhuzh it up and maybe add the Double Decker Lashes. All right, so mascara is done and applied, and I actually got both eyes done and only used this Lancome mascara. So, and it looks really nice. So I'm not 100% sure what my issue with it was before, but it built up really nice. And then also really quickly, I want to mention for eyeliner, I did go in and I just added a little bit of my Fenty Cause I'm Black eyeliner. You guys have seen this in pretty much every video since I got it, which was my full face of Fenty, which I will link up here. And with that, we're on to lips. And then that's the last thing. And I thought it would be appropriate to grab 
grab this little guy out of the mix. This is the Too Faced um, Sex on the Peach lipstick. It's a matte lipstick. And this was actually one of my favorite lipsticks that I tried back in, God, when did they come out with this collection? 2018, like early-ish 2018, maybe spring or something like that. But I love this color. It's like a mauve purple and it's so, so pretty. I was testing out a couple of different colors, but this one right here, it's just so good. All right, you guys, that is everything all complete. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. I think for me, one of the big takeaways with this video, and I feel like this has happened a lot lately with these Shop My Stash videos, is that I'm, I'm constantly just reminded that even if it's older makeup, it's not new, it's not trendy, or even in the situation like I had with the bronzers, I was blatantly laughing because I thought for sure it was going to turn out absolutely crazy. And videos like this just prove to me over and over again that makeup really is something that you can use. And, you know, you can mix this with that and create a really good product, or you can use this alone. You can use this for something you wouldn't normally use it for. And that's one of the reasons that I love doing these types of videos so much is just that that constant reinventing of products and having things that are not current and not so trendy right now. For the love of God, let's be honest with ourselves. Have you seen anybody use anything even like this as of late for a bronzer? Probably not because it's not a bronzer and that's not what you use it for. But the reason I love videos like this is because they reinvent old trends and they give me a chance to really like dive back in and use, like I said, just use makeup that isn't super hot and it isn't trendy and find a way to still get use out of what I've already spent money on and what I already own. And I just, I don't know, there's, there's something about this video in particular that when I went into it, I was in like this, this feeling of like, oh, this, this could go good. This could also go really bad. And I'm just so glad that it turned out as well as it did. And it looks so strong and so bold with products that I, I, I was admittedly a little bit sketched out about, which makes me really happy. I want to know from you guys just really quickly, do you ever leave these videos like shop my stash in general and go and just think like, wow, I want to go use this. Does it make you want to go reach for old products? Because every single time, and I watch other people shop my stashes, all the time. They're one of my favorite videos to watch. And when I get done watching them, I always go over and I'm just like, whoo, like I just want to start touching all of my old makeup because it, it almost like makes them, I don't know, makes them new again or makes them exciting again in some way. I don't know. You guys can let me know if I'm the only one down below. Um, if you haven't checked me out yet, Instagram and on Twitter, those will both be listed down in the description. If you haven't subscribed yet, please be sure to do that before you leave. I do put up three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they go up around 7 a.m. my time here in good old Northern Michigan. And and I think that that's it, you guys. Thank you all again so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. And please don't forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh my God, I have like, I saved myself like literally one bite of cauliflower. And I'm going to eat it because I saved it for myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Going to get all the salt because I'm craving salt off of the bottom of the bowl. It's very cold. And I very don't care because it's very delicious. <laughs> so good. Thicker and oh my God in heaven. Let's go ahead and talk about eyes. Anybody else see that hair? I'm swimming. You don't do this. <laughs> Normal people don't do that. And then with both of those on, we're going to lightly top them. I have a hair in my nose. Stop it, stop it, stop it. 